The Earth has changed so many times and transformed heavily from when it first formed. How life came from non-life is still a big scientific mystery. However, we do have a current best guess for the beginning of life on Earth, which we think is around 3.8 billion years ago. But before we get into that, let's start from the beginning and take a trip back in time. The Earth didn't always exist, and it wasn't always hospitable for life. Approximately 4.6 billion years ago, our solar system was just a cloud of dust and gas known as a solar nebula. And around 4.5 billion years ago, the solar system settled into its current layout. Earth's rocky core formed first with heavy elements colliding and binding together. Dense material sank to the protoplanet's center, and lighter material built up the crust. The Earth suffered a huge impact sometime during its formation that catapulted pieces of the young planet into space and formed the Moon, which took up orbit around the young planet. This was known as the Paleoarchean Era, when the Moon was still very close to Earth and likely caused huge tides of more than 300 meters high. Hurricane-force wind blasted through the planet, and the evolutionary process began. The new Earth was a hellish place during this time. The flow of the mantle beneath the crust caused the movement of large plates of rock on the planet's surface. Collisions of these plates created huge mountains and volcanoes that continually erupted, shooting out huge amounts of lava and gases, and the reefs were created in the oceans. At this time, the protoplanet barely had an atmosphere, but as the planet cooled, gravity captured those gases from the volcanoes. Water was deposited on Earth by collisions of many comets and asteroids. One other key thing for life to emerge on our planet, aside from water, is where it lies from its star, the Sun. Earth sits in what's called the Goldilocks Zone, which puts it close enough to the Sun to allow liquid water to exist on the Earth's surface. Before life even began or had a chance on Earth, radiation from our star was the primary source of energy on our planet, just as it is today. The early Earth had very little oxygen, if any at all, and it's theorized that solar energy provided the jump start that transformed simple organic molecules into more complex ones, transforming them into the building blocks of biology and life. Life likely developed in undersea alkaline vents and was probably based on ribonucleic acid, a nucleic acid which is present in all living cells rather than deoxyribonucleic acid an organic chemical containing genetic information and instructions for protein synthesis. At some point during this time, a common ancestor gave rise to two main groups of life, bacteria and archaea, although exactly how this happened is still uncertain. For billions of years, tiny microbes and single-celled organisms evolved and began feeding on methane around 3.6 billion years ago. And at the 3 billion year mark, evidence of viruses were found. However, some argue that viruses could be as old as life itself. Sometime during Earth's early history, the planet took a turn towards habitability, when a group of microbes known as cyanobacteria evolved with the ability to turn light and water into energy, and released oxygen in the process. Dissolved oxygen caused iron in the oceans to rust and sink to the sea floor, which formed striking red-banded iron formations. But between 2.4 and 2.1 billion years ago, something incredibly remarkable and disastrous took place in this early cycle of life. The poisonous waste produced by these evolved photosynthetic cyanobacteria, oxygen, built up in the atmosphere, causing anaerobic bacteria to die off, leading to the Earth's first mass extinction, which some call the Great Oxidation Event. How can oxygen be toxic, you might be asking? Oxygen became toxic because of the high levels and overwhelmed the natural antioxidant defense system of any living microbe or bacteria at the time. Basically, these cyanobacteria in the form of algae ate themselves to death and caused a global extinction. But the worst was about to come. Around 2.3 billion years ago, the Earth froze over as the possible result of the Great Oxidation Event and volcanic activity on the planet slowed down. Over time, the ice melted, which resulted in more oxygen being indirectly released into the atmosphere. 
This gave way to the Neoprotozoic era, where protozoans such as Paramecium, Amoebas, and Melanocerillium evolved. The first animal cells were different from plants, and these cells began feeding on plants and became the first herbivores. But during this era, the Earth froze again at least two more times, which stunted evolutionary development. However, life finds a way. And during this time, fungi, worms, and other small bilaterally symmetrical animals survived and evolved. Fast forward to the Paleozoic era. Complex life forms began to develop, including fish, arthropods, mollusks, and echinoderms. Plants started to show up on the surface of the Earth, and air-breathing animals started to walk, crawl, and slither on land. Meanwhile, sharks, horseshoe crabs, and starfish began to fill the oceans. At the beginning of the Devonian period, insects started to take form, and ferns were the common land plant. A prehistoric, jawless fish with bony armor called the Cephalaspis, and crabs, large sharks, hagfish, and ratfish evolved. This gave way to the Carboniferous period, where the climate on Earth was thought to be tropical with little change during the seasons, and gave rise to a new wave of strange creatures. Plants covered the Earth during this time, and the organic deposits of plant debris formed the world's first coal deposits, which humans are still burning today. The growth of these forests increased oxygen levels in the atmosphere, which peaked to around 35% compared to the 21% it is today. This alone might explain the size of the giant creepy crawlies that emerged. Some animals and insects may have developed in water and grew bigger as a way to protect themselves against the high levels of oxygen at the time. One of those were giant insects called Meganeuropsis, which closely resemble modern-day dragonflies, had wingspans of 63 to 68 centimeters and could be seen in the skies during this period. One incredibly detailed fossil of a huge dragonfly that died 320 million years ago was discovered to have a wingspan of 0.75 meters. Deadly poisonous centipedes, two meters long, crawled around with mammoth cockroaches and scorpions as big as one meter long. Amphibians began to diversify, and reptiles evolved into forms much like modern-day lizards with a backbone, allowing them to live and move on land. These amphibians were also huge, and some species were predatory, resembling modern-day crocodiles, armed with sharp teeth and reaching lengths of almost six meters long. And like modern-day crocodiles and alligators, some evolved to have a thicker, scaly skin, which solved the problem of their bodies drying out if they were out of the water too long. And for the first time, amphibians evolved to lay amniotic or air-breathing eggs on land. And that changed everything, since these animals could now live out of and away from water sources. The Carboniferous period gave way to the Permian period that began approximately 300 million years ago, just 50 million years before the dinosaurs. All the continents during this period existed as one large landmass called Pangaea. The first large plant-eating and meat-eating animals evolved during this time, some of these creatures could be mistaken for dinosaurs, but they were actually more closely related to mammals and reptiles. One of these bizarre creatures was Diplocerapsis. It looked a little like a salamander that averaged around one meter long, but its head was shaped like a boomerang. Another new reptile on the planet was the iconic Dimetrodon, which grew to about five meters long and had a large sail on its back, which is likely used to regulate its body temperature. During the Permian period, mammals were increasing in dominance. The biggest of these were creatures classified as Gorgonopsians, which were a class of giant, bear-like animals that all had different teeth that were specialized for different functions. These animals could be either herbivores or carnivores and vary in size from less than a kilogram to more than a ton. One group of these creatures were known as cynodonts. Their name means dog-like teeth. And these animals had social behavior, and there is some fossil evidence that shows they hunted in packs. In the oceans, fish with true bony skeletons evolved. Sharks and rays flourished, as well as sponges and coral. On land, insects evolved with adapted mouthparts that allowed them to pierce and suck. 
But around 252 million years ago, the Permian era came to an abrupt end by a cataclysmic event that caused mass extinction. In 2001, scientists made a chilling discovery. A massive comet or asteroid, similar to the one that put an end to the dinosaurs, wiped out the giant reptile predecessors 200 million years earlier. But how did scientists come to this conclusion? Molecules of helium and argon gas were found locked in carbon in high proportions that could have only come from space. It's estimated that the asteroid or comet was between 6 and 12 kilometers wide in diameter. Researchers say the strike would have released the energy one million times greater than the biggest earthquake of the last century. Aside from this discovery, there's some evidence that current-day Siberia and China experienced volcanic eruptions on an unimaginably massive scale, and those eruptions created dust and ash clouds that blocked out sunlight. Not only that, but over one million years, three million cubic kilometers of lava poured out of the ground, covering the entire planet in a layer 10 meters thick. The asteroid impact, combined with volcanic activity, was the proverbial blast from a double-barreled shotgun. The Earth was once again a very unhappy place. The combination of these two events resulted in what's called the Great Dying. 90% of all marine animals and 70% of all land animals that were alive during this time perished. It would seem like this would be the final chapter in the evolution of life on Earth, and it would be seemingly wiped out completely. But a new age would begin after this, and the age of the dinosaurs would begin. Would you like to see what happened after that great Permian extinction, and how the great dinosaurs got their start? If so, let us know in the comments, and make sure to stay tuned here, and we thank you for watching.